Phoenix, fighting with all her might, had nearly reached Olympus on her quest to defeat Typhon, the dreaded god destroyer. But first, she would have to plunge into the Forge Lands. Once home to Hephaestus, god of fire, hammer, anvil, and forge, these were now godless lands. Scorched, laid to waste. What was not dead was dying. Chaos reigned. For here, monsters roamed free. Can you. Can you not tell this story like I wasn't just there? Zeus. I was literally just there two weeks ago. And even if I wasn't, though I was, I'd be listening to your story for days. It's called dramatic effect. It's called Where's My Skip Button? Uh, yeah. Fine. Cute title. Ubisoft Quebec presents the video game formerly known as Gods and Monsters. It is actually pronounced Ubisoft. Ah, the French. How's it going, guys? Lucian Sword here. I was fortunate enough to get to play a demo version of Immortals Phoenix Rising for a couple hours, and I'm excited to share my experience with you guys today. If this is your first time hearing about this game, let me fill you in on what it's all about. Formerly known as Gods and Monsters, in Immortals Phoenix Rising, you play as Phoenix, a winged demigod destined to save the world from Typhon, the main bad guy of the world who was imprisoned for thousands of years but finally breaks free and starts destroying the world. Kind of a cliche story, I know. Immortals takes place in a beautiful open world inspired by Greek mythology. Before we jump any further into this though, I just want to say that the game that I played was still a work in progress and I was only able to play in one region of the game with abilities and stats locked to a about a mid-game level. This is not a review of the complete game, but rather my impressions after playing the demo in a controlled environment for a couple hours. Orion's blindness? I wonder if he could fix my bum toenail. He is not a doctor. He led Orion east toward the sun, where Helios healed him. Immortals Phoenix Rising seems to borrow some gameplay elements from some of my favorite games, such as Assassin's Creed, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and God of War. The combat in Immortals feels like a mix between Assassin's Creed and God of War with godly abilities that use stamina and both grounded and aerial combat a common occurrence. Using too many abilities quickly depletes your stamina, making you use light and heavy attacks to regain enough stamina to use the abilities again. You can also dodge and parry enemy attacks, and there's many many different weapons and armor that you can find throughout the game to customize your look with a wide variety of different stats and abilities tied to them. What's that blocking the forge's ventilation? Overall, I found the combat to be fun and engaging. Although sometimes it was difficult to target a specific enemy when surrounded by a large group. It made me excited though to see what other combat abilities, weapons, and armor I'd be able to unlock and find and equip as I progress through the game. 
It would be hard to talk about Immortal Phoenix Rising without mentioning some strong similarities to Breath of the Wild. For starters, the game takes place in a big open world with a big bad guy about to destroy everything, as we already went over. You're the chosen hero to save the world. Sure, this is seen in many games, but also add to that that Phoenix has wings and can glide around, similar to Link's paraglider in Breath of the Wild. And scattered around on the map, there's these things called vaults, which are basically the shrines in Breath of the Wild. The vaults are like mini dungeons with a few puzzles and a secret chest in each one, and a piece of Zeus's lightning at the end, which you can use to grant ability points. You can also capture and tame a horse, and you have a tether ability to pick up certain blocks. Similar to how Magnesis works in Breath of the Wild, although in, in Phoenix it's not uh, able to work on everything, only specific blocks. Despite all these similarities, Immortals Phoenix Rising has enough charm, variety of enemies, challenging puzzles and trials, and this stylized open world to be unique enough. The open world setting of Immortals Phoenix Rising begs you to explore every nook and cranny and rewards you for doing so. You can find all kinds of things to pick up, such as ingredients for potions, upgrade materials, and more. I loved roaming the environment, stumbling upon many puzzles, quests, new items everywhere I went. The game clearly has a ton of content, and it would be safe to assume you will be playing this game for many hours if you want to see and do everything there is to offer. The main mode of travel is by horse, but you can also fly or climb or fast travel to locations that you've already visited. The voice acting was surprisingly funny, and the attention to small details in the game kept it feeling fresh and polished. For example, Phoenix doesn't always open a chest in the same way. So, after having only a taste of what Immortals Phoenix Rising has to offer, I can say that I'm really excited to play the final release of the game. The graphics are beautiful, the open world promises many hours of enjoyable gameplay, and while the story might be not all that interesting, the combat, the puzzles, the exploration, the customization, and the general gameplay more than make up for that. Typhon stole those two? Karen was saving up for the bridge! I look forward to playing the release of Immortals Phoenix Rising when it comes out on December 3rd, 2020. And I hope you guys enjoyed this preview. Immortals Phoenix Rising will be available on Stadia, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. I also want to thank Ubisoft for letting me play this game early, and I want you guys to let me know what you think in the comments below. I think I've done enough talking for now, so I'm going to go ahead and choose some of my favorite moments from when I was playing the demo and give you guys some extended footage if you would like to see some more 
gameplay without me talking over it. I'm gonna probably add about 10 more minutes to this video. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. This is Lucian Sword, take it easy. restored power to the forge as Hephaestus's workshop came roaring back to life. Translation. Everyone can go home happy. That's why. You are fools to think I was so easily conquered. Come, mortal, and face your real past. Me! more of this story is ah! A lot. So send Hermes out for delivery, because we aren't going anywhere. Typhon's rage and corruption were powerful, but Phoenix slipped through. 
through his clutches. For now. So, that was a bit much. What just happened? Where have you been? Partying in Hades. You don't have to keep bringing it up because you didn't get the VIP invite the last thousand years. Try harder. You have to make those chains work for you. That was Typhon. Now free of the clutches of Tartarus, trying to cleanse the world of all the gods. So this whole story you're telling me about how you think this mortal named Phoenix has a chance to free all the gods from Typhon's grip and then destroy him? Good luck! Phoenix just saved your son Hephaestus. She recovered his lost essence and returned his godly powers. Are you even listening? What? Okay. I'll start again. Oh, gods, no! I have a better idea. How about you tell me all about it this holiday season? Wink? Did you just say wink out loud? Anyway, let's see what this place has to explore. Puzzles, vaults, I'm sure there's a lot to see. Phoenix approached Telos, Hephaestus' mightiest automaton. Europa loved the bronze oath I give to them. It was a nice gesture, Zeus. But Medea eventually discovered Talos' weakness. How was I supposed to know giving him only one vein wasn't a good idea? 
It was held shut by a nail. It seemed foolproof. All she had to do was pluck that nail, and the great automaton fell. I am the never-ending truth! I am your world reborn!
Yeah. <laughs> 